Welcome to Simply Stylish DIY, where we take ordinary to extraordinary. Hey y'all, welcome back to Simply Stylish DIY. Today, we will be making four fun patriotic DIYs. We will be using Dollar Tree supplies to keep these crafts budget friendly. I think you're gonna love how these turn out. So without further ado, let's get to crafting. DIY number one, patriotic napkin truck round. For this adorable DIY, you'll need one of the large wood rounds from Dollar Tree, also a patriotic napkin, some patriotic ribbon. You also need some distressor, a brush, a sponge brush, Mod Podge, and a wooden truck. I think you're gonna love how charming this DIY turns out. Uh, I picked up this pack of patriotic words at Hobby Lobby. I think at the time they were 40% off and the uh, entire pack was only $2.99. And I thought this would be really cute to take out the navy blue America word and put it on the back of the truck. So we're going to do that uh, here in just a minute. And then also we're going to use this pack of napkins. I got them at Dollar Tree. And instead of painting our sign, we're going to use it and decoupage that on. And once this is all put together, I think you're just going to think it's adorable. Using these napkins to decoupage can uh, really save you some time so you don't have to paint things. And then you get a really pretty design behind it. So I'm going to take out one out of the pack and you're going to separate it make sure that you peel the uh, two pieces apart you do not want to use the uh, back side you just want one single ply napkin to use to um, put onto your wood round i'm just going to crunch that white backing up and i'm going to use that in a few minutes to uh, smooth out the uh, front of the wood round with the decoupage napkin so i'll use, reuse it also this napkin um, does not cover all of the uh, wood if you wanted to and you did want it to cover it you could snip off some pieces of another one or the edges of this one uh, and uh, just use it to put into the bare spots once i get all that lined up i'm gonna go ahead and take that napkin off and take some of this gloss mod podge um, when you use the unfinished wood like this it kind of soaks in you just want a nice thin coat but you want to use enough so it's, it doesn't dry out while you're uh, rubbing it on. I poured out a little bit too much here and uh, I knew that when I poured it so I'm just going to take my sponge brush and put a little bit back into the bottle uh, to use again next time. I just wanted to uh, get a nice thin coat all over the front of the uh, wood round. Once you have all of the uh, Mod Podge smoothed out and uh, a nice thin coat, take the uh, napkin and line it back up if your napkin is the right size and you'll have good coverage like I said mine is not so I'm just going to make sure that I have the uh, same amount on the edges so when I go to distress it it will look even <laughs> Try not to move it very much once you lay it over uh, because it can make a little tears. It's really easy to work with though. You can just take your finger and cover that back up. And then we're going to be putting things on the front anyhow. So if you have a little piece that tears, you can cover that easily. Um, just take your fingers and press out any creases or uh, little bubbles and uh, work those out the best you can. I'm going to take that little piece of backing that I crunched up earlier and just take it and kind of rub over it a little bit. Um, that way you have most of it smoothed out. Once you have that smoothed out and it uh, mod podge to the front, the little excess that you have on the edges, I want to show here on one side that you can take your scissors and just trim it up around the uh, wood round. And then if it hangs over a little bit, you can just mod podge that down. If you want a nice crisp clean edge, I didn't want that look on mine. So I'm going to, while it's still wet, I'm going to take my fingers and peel off a little bit of the edges just so it kind of matches up with those uh, bare spots that I left and that way I can have a little bit more wood shown that I can use my distressor and make it a little bit more um, antique distressed and rustic looking. And then I'm going to take some Mod Podge on my sponge brush and go over the top of that to uh, seal it down. While that's drying, I'm going to take my uh, ribbon that I picked up at Sam's and make a uh, simple bow on my Easy Bow Maker. I'm just going to make a double loop bow and uh, take it off tight with a pipe cleaner and fluff the loops. Next, I wanted to put something in the center of the uh, bow, so I'm going to take this uh, white button that I have in my stash, put some uh, hot glue on the edges, make sure you don't put it in the center so the glue pushes up through the uh, little holes and burns you. 
so I'm going to take it, glue that on, and I didn't want it to be just that bright white uh, because I want this to look distressed. I'm going to take the uh, distressed oxide that I had got from Hobby Lobby and uh, put a little bit on that just to uh, tone it down and so it will match the rest of the craft. I love to buy um, seasonal items when they go on clearance after the uh, holiday, so I picked this up last year at Joanne uh, when they did a seasonal clearance. I think I got it like 80% off. So always be on the lookout after the holidays to pick up um, things like this. I knew I would use it this year and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to put it on this wood round. So I'm going to do the same thing with my Distressed Oxide. It has a little bit of a uh, raw edge but I want to go ahead sew everything all matches together and put some distress around all the uh, edges. I had thought about handwriting something here on the uh, tailgate of the truck. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do that. And then I uh, remembered I had picked up that pack uh, that I showed earlier from Hobby Lobby. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to use the word America in the navy blue. So I'm just going to put some hot glue on the back. And uh, I'm going to hold that the A part at the top because I want it to hang off up at the top. I had thought about uh, using the word that said fireworks and then putting some fireworks in the back of the truck to uh, stand up over that. There's just so many different ways that you could make these to uh, make it your own unique creation. Once my uh, wood round dried underneath the fan, I'm going to take it and use the uh, distressed oxide and go around the edges, especially um, making sure I get that bare wood that I had where I tore it, um, just so it gives it that rustic charm. Next, I'm going to take it and do the same thing in the center, just making sure I have enough on my brush and going back and forth in the same pattern. Uh, I went um, horizontal on this just to give it uh, more of the uh, rustic charm. If you do not like the distressed rustic look, just omit these steps and just keep your edges nice and crisp. Next, I'm just going to take the truck and uh, put some hot glue on the back once I have it all um, covered up in the spots that are going to stick. I'm going to flip it over and put it toward the bottom of the sign uh, because I wanted to make sure the wheels didn't hang off at the bottom and I also wanted to leave room at the top to put the bow. I didn't want the uh, bow tails to uh, hang down and cover the truck so I'm going to put those out to the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dovetail those little ends and leave enough room that you can just kind of crunch it up to make a little uh, loop in with the tails. So I'm going to uh, position it, glue it on there in the center above the truck. And then I'm going to take some hot glue and put under the edge to hold it down to have that uh, permanent little loop. Okay, here's our finished product on this one. I hope you loved this, how this one turned out. It's so easy to take these napkins um, that you can buy in so many different designs and use those instead of trying to paint something or um, work it with material. This is just an easy way that you can make it your own unique creation and uh, you could change this out with the uh, seasons and do one of these uh, to be a focal point with uh, your decor. You can put a hanger on the back of this and hang it on your door or a wall. You can also put it in an easel like I did here and set it on a counter. If you'll stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you how I took all of today's DIYs and put them together in a group and uh, styled a really pretty uh, patriotic scene. DIY number two, floral patriotic mason jar. For this DIY, you'll need one of the patriotic mason jars from Dollar Tree. You'll also need some uh, red, white, and blue flowers of your choice, some patriotic ribbon, distressed oxide, and some wire clippers and a brush. I think you're going to absolutely love how fun and easy this DIY is. It's taking something so simple from Dollar Tree, adding a few flowers and ribbon and distressing it a little bit, and making it uh, something that looks totally different to way, than the way you bought it, but the craft can be done in under five minutes, and you'll have something that you can put out year after year uh, for each holiday. When I saw this um, patriotic mason jar at Dollar Tree, I thought it was really cute and I thought we could add so many um, little things to it and uh, spruce it up a little bit to give it more of a rustic charm. And this will uh, be adorable when we're finished. So we're just going to take it. I went ahead and removed the tag from the uh, little twine topper. I thought that would be good to leave on because it is stapled to the back uh, so we can use that for our hanger. And uh, we're going to add 
some of the distress oxide to the top. I thought about taking some brown paint, which you absolutely could do. I just wanted to take a little bit of the um, shine off just to make it more distressed and rustic looking. And then I'm going to do the same thing around the edges of the um, mason jar, just adding it all to the edges. And then I'm going to do the same thing once I finish all around it to the center. I wanted all of today's DIYs to... Um, look really good together so I could uh, put them as my decor pieces especially so I can show you the picture at the end so I wanted to take this little rustic star I'm going to use it in this DIY and I'm also going to use it in the last one and then they can uh, tie the two in together so I'm going to take it and uh, glue it uh, on top of the star that's already there on the sign just to um, bring in a little bit of the rustic charm I wanted uh, all the DIYs to look cohesive, so I'm going to use the same ribbon that I used in the first DIY. So I'm going to put it on my bow maker and just make a really quick, simple uh, two-loop bow. Uh, I wanted to put it on here just to hold it together and make sure I have the same size loops. I'm going to take it off the uh, bow maker, tie it with a pipe cleaner, and then I'm going to dovetail the ends just to give them more of a finished look. I took a little piece of foam out of my stash that I had for my previous DIY and I'm going to see uh, how I want to put that so I can take my flowers. Uh, I picked these little red flowers up at Dollar Tree and then the blue ones came in that bunch that I showed at the beginning. Um, I got those at Walmart so I snipped off a couple of those uh, tops and I'm going to take these and stick them into the foam. I thought it would be easier to glue on the foam with everything in it than to try to get all the pieces to glue onto the uh, mason jar. Um, it's just a little hack that you could use so you're not trying to get everything to glue down and then you can have everything spaced the way you want to. After I get those uh, flowers positioned, I'm going to take some glue, glue that onto the back of the foam. If you want to glue your flowers in too so they don't come off, especially if you're going to hang this outside, that would be good to do. I'm going to use mine inside so I didn't do that and then position it on the uh, mason jar so it doesn't block your words. I wanted to tie the two DIYs in together so I'm going to do the same thing I did on the first one. Take one of those white buttons and glue it here in the center of my bow and then after I have it glued on I'm going to take some of the distressor and uh, distress the button so it takes the uh, uh, bright white off and gives it more of that rustic charm. Once I have that done, I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of the bow and stick it there in the center onto that foam between the uh, flowers. And then just take your fingers and fluff the flowers where you want them and also the bow and get everything positioned so it looks nice together. I wanted to put a little piece of twine on the uh, front of the little star just to give it more of a 3D effect. Um, so I'm going to take it and tie a bow just like I'm tying my shoes. And put a little dab of hot glue on there on the front and glue that bow down. I'm also going to trim the tails just so they hang there at the bottom of the star. Okay, here's our finished product. I hope you love how this one turned out. It's so much fun just to go in Dollar Tree and see what you can uh, get and uh, be able to bring it home and add a little bit of distressor to it uh, to give it some rustic charm, uh, some embellishments, and flowers and ribbon. And you can take something that you bought there that's um, simple and make it uh, something that you can enjoy for many years to come. DIY number three, paint stick, patriotic flag. Okay, for this fun DIY, you'll need uh, to get some paint sticks. I'm going to use six in this. You'll also need some of the uh, large uh, popsicle sticks, some small popsicle sticks, some red, white, and blue paint, and distressed oxide, and a pack of the uh, wood stars, and I'm going to use eight of those, and some twine. Okay, we're going to start this DIY off by taking the paint sticks. We're going to do the back side first um, because we're going to paint the other side. This is going to be the back. So we're going to take the paint sticks and have the handle part down um, to start this off. And the uh, back side that has the ruler side on it, make sure those are all facing you uh, because you don't want those to be the part that you paint. I wanted to make sure that um, before I glued the uh, 
popsicle sticks on the back that this was all even. So I'm just going to take these large popsicle sticks and press them together on the sides and the top. I didn't have my square um, in my craft room at the time, so I'm just going to use these just to make sure that um, they're not um, out of position. Once I have that evened up, I'm going to take these large popsicle sticks and put some hot glue on the uh, back side and then flip them over. I'm going to have to uh, turn them at a diagonal so they fit and I'm going to put two here uh, side by side to make sure that I um, cover each of the uh, paint sticks and hold those together. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Um, but that popsicle stick was too long, so I'm going to take two small popsicle sticks and do the same thing by putting hot glue on the uh, back side, flip them over, and holding those um, big paint sticks together. Any part of it that you don't feel like has good coverage that are holding together, just add another little small popsicle stick with some glue. And uh, once you have that done, go ahead and flip it over and you'll have your sign ready to paint. Just make sure that you don't put any popsicle sticks in those little holes where the handles are. Next I'm going to come down about a third of the way down and take some painter's tape and put that uh, straight across making sure I press it down with my fingers so the paint does not bleed underneath it and make sure that you press it down on the sides too because we're going to paint those. I'm going to take my blue paint here and a sponge brush and uh, put the top with the blue over the line over the paint um, tape. Make sure when you paint uh, with the paint tape that you paint away from it um, and then that way you're not pushing any paint underneath it. Once I have a, a good coat of blue on that I'm going to sit it over to the side to dry and next I'm going to take these wood stars. I'm going to use eight of these and uh, paint these with some white chalk paint. You can use any kind of paint here, acrylic, uh, water based or the chalk paint works well. I'm just going to shake it real good and use what's in my lid and just make sure I have uh, pretty good coverage on these. It doesn't matter if you can see the wood come through because I wanted all my uh, DIYs today to have that rustic look so I'm going to distress film anyhow. I just want to make sure that I um, don't have any bare wood showing. Once I have a good coat of paint on all the stars I'm going to set those aside to dry. Next I'm going to remove my uh, painter's tape to uh, make sure I have a nice crisp line underneath and then I'm going to take um, my tape and put over top of the uh, blue that we just painted right at the bottom edge of the blue. Make sure that uh, the bottom of the painter's tape lines up with that because this is where we're going to start painting our red and white. You could have painted the sticks individually before you glued them together, but I chose to do it this way because I wanted all my lines to uh, match up. Next, I wanted to uh, paint the white first in case that I got over on the uh, other uh, paint sticks so I could cover that up more with the red. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the first one and go ahead and paint all the ones I'm going to do white, skipping every other one. And I'm going to use that same white um, chalk paint that I used to paint the stars and just take my foam brush here and try to stay um, in the lines of each um, paint stick. I'm going to make sure I have pretty good coverage of the white and also make sure that you paint uh, the side of the one that's going to be white and also the bottom edges. Next I'm going to take my red paint. I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the white, just trying to stay in the lines of the uh, paint stick. Uh, if I go over that's okay because you can distress it and uh, change it if you need to. Um, make sure that you paint the edges and the uh, bottoms of those as well. Once you have all those painted I'm going to go ahead and take my stars and take the distressed oxide just so I can tie all the crafts in together and have that rustic charm. I'm going to go around the edges of each of the stars um, and then I'm going to also take a little bit that's on the brush and do the middle also just to um, make it more um, distressed. I'm going to do the same thing for all eight stars and then uh, we'll glue those onto the sign. I want to make sure they were uh, laid on here correctly so I'm going to go ahead and glue the first one on and then I'm going to skip uh, where the next one is going to be and go ahead and glue the third one on and then I can go back there in the uh, center and make sure I have them positioned correctly um, just so I didn't have to measure it that once I have that first row uh, glued on I'm going to put two underneath those between them and then do the uh, bottom row of three. I'm going to take my distressed oxide and go around the edges of the uh, entire sign, even around the blue. It's hard to see here on the video, but um, you can see it really good um, 
in person uh, and also I'm going to take the uh, same distressor on my brush and go around uh, on the front to to give it just that rustic finish I went ahead and cut a piece of twine it's about probably six inches long and I wanted to hot glue that to the back side so I can have a hanger if I wanted to hang it if you wanted to get some uh, wood beads or even some red, white, and blue beads here, you could uh, string these on the uh, piece of twine and have that as an extra embellishment too. It would be really pretty. Okay, here's our finished product. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. It's a lot of fun to make. It's something simple that you could make um, and give as a gift. You could take these if you uh, did craft shows. Um, you could make them rustic. You could leave off the distress uh, oxide and uh, just do them a nice crisp edge. Um, this would also be fun to make uh, this summer with uh, your kids or grandkids. DIY number four, patriotic palette flag. This is such a fun and quick DIY. I think you're going to really enjoy uh, the simplicity of it. So you're just going to need one of the uh, Dollar Tree uh, little wood palettes, red, white, and blue paint, one of the little rustic stars, or a wood star would work here well, and some twine. This craft is so much fun to make. Uh, you can make several of these in no time at all. So we're just going to start out by taking the uh, little sticker off the back side of the palette, and then we're going to take some painter's tape like we did in the previous DIY, come down maybe about fourth of the way, and then you're going to put that across, and then we're going to do the same thing and paint the top uh, with the blue. But first I want to take the little star and line it up. I wanted uh, one of the little edges at the top to kind of hang off, so I wanted to make sure I had enough room to do that. Once I have that done, I'm going to press the tape down and take some of the blue paint. Again, uh, when you paint with painter's tape, just paint away from the tape. That way you're not pushing down the paint uh, underneath. And then if you also want to paint the palette under the little piece of wood under the palette here, uh, you can. I did not want to. I just wanted that natural wood to show through. Um, make sure though when you're painting your blue that you paint the sides of the top palette um, piece of wood and the edges at the uh, top. This acrylic paint dries really fast so once that's dry I'm going to take the same piece of tape and I'm going to take it and do the same thing we did in the last DIY. I'm going to um, put the uh, part that doesn't have the blue on it, I'm going to put that at the top, and the bottom piece I'm going to line up with the uh, bottom of the blue underneath and press that down. Therefore we can start painting the uh, red and white stripes. So go ahead and take your brush and do uh, your red on the edges and go ahead and do the uh, next one after you skip the uh, one there in the center. And then once you have the red finished, go ahead and do your white uh, stripes. Um, making sure that you paint away from the painter's tape and once you have that done go ahead and remove your um, painter's tape and you should have a nice crisp line underneath. After that's dry I'm going to take the uh, little uh, rustic looking um, star and glue that on. I wanted to use the same star that I used in the uh, second DIY with the mason jar just to tie them all in together. I'm going to put the uh, glue there on the edges and go ahead and turn that over and stick it there in the center with the little um, tea sticking up over the top. Just so those two have the same look I'm going to take my twine, make a little bow like I'm tying my shoes and glue that on the front of the star as well. Next I wanted to distress uh, the palette a little bit so I'm just going to take the brush that I have the uh, white on still before I rinse my brushes out and uh, it's just pretty much dry at this point so I'm going to take it and go around uh, the edges of the uh, palette. I want to make sure that I uh, do uh, some on the red and also come to the top and do some on the blue just to give it uh, more of a distressed look. I wanted something to show up on the white stripe as well as the uh, white showing up on the red. So I'm going to take my um, brush that has the blue still on it too before I wash it out and take a sh couple strokes across the uh, blue with the blue onto the white and it just gives it more of a, a finished uh, distressed look. After I have that done and it's dry I'm going to take my distressed oxide and go around the edges of the uh, little palette um, making sure that I hit all of the um, edges and also run that over the center. 
Okay, here's our finished product. I just love how fun and easy these are to make. You can make uh, several of these in no time at all. Um, again, like I said in the uh, third DIY, these would be so cute if you did craft shows to make up a whole bunch of these and take them uh, to that because you could um, set them uh, together uh, with the paint stick uh, flag and this one and uh, have like one large one and one small one together. You could sell them as a set or you could just make them for yourself and set them around with your uh, decor. Okay, here's today's DIYs all staged together. I thought these turned out so cute and so many different elements and each one uh, correspond back to each other with the ribbons matching, the uh, little stars matching, um, trying to use the twine in a couple of them. Um, I purchased this um, patriotic gnome also at Dollar Tree with the um, little wood uh, patriotic hanger, the beaded hanger. I thought this would be really cute. I think I'm going to take all this and uh, decorate my kitchen. Thanks for crafting along with me today. I hope you enjoyed these fun and patriotic DIYs. If you did, please like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any upcoming crafty content. Also, leave me a comment down below to say hi and let me know which one of today's DIYs was your favorite. Until next time, happy crafting! I enjoyed our time together. Thanks for watching. I linked another video here for more crafting inspiration. Be sure to check it out. Have a great day.